Shout out to Nicky Bros for this excellent Harith gameplay. If you want your gameplays reviewed, you can send it to my email address. Just like Nicky's submission, it should be at least equal or better quality. Otherwise, I won't be able to upload it to the channel. With that out of the way, let's head towards the game. This game is a perfect example why a balanced lineup is important. The enemy team had a balanced world distribution. Generic, nothing special, but okay nonetheless. Nikki's team on the other hand, well, you tell me. Nana was their XP laner while Layla was on the mid lane. Besides Tyrael, they didn't have a tank hero that can peel off enemies. Harith was there, but Harith's tankiness is reliant on his battle spell and ultimate. He can't just peel or zone enemies from the get-go. In addition to that, unlike the typical and recommended heroes who specialize on the XP lane, Nana will have a difficult time pressuring the lanes because of how fragile she is. Unlike a normal XP laner, she is significantly easier to take down, which will make it close to impossible for her to split push or put pressure on the lane. Not sure why Layla decided to go to the mid lane. That is rarely a good idea. While I agree that mid laners don't have to be mages all the time, it has to be at least a hero that is greatly capable of clearing the minions quickly, especially in the early game. Kudos to Nikki for adjusting. Thankfully, Nikki picked Harith, a mage hero that can be an excellent gold laner thanks to his potential to carry games. Personally, despite the changes they made in the jungle where invaders will get debuffed, I still think a roamer needs to roam around the map and not stay in one location majority of the laning phase. Staying in one location makes the minimap more predictable, making the team more vulnerable to ganks and other disadvantages such as weaker vision control and less failed presence. In that case though, I guess it favored Nikki because the enemy roamer was also on the gold lane. Unlike the opposing roamer, Tyrael also utilized the bushes which is always a plus. Utilizing bushes is a great way to add an element of surprise to your game which can help you gain an advantage in clashes and vision control. Okay, let's go. Pussy! Shoot him! As much as possible, avoid that spot. It's a popular poking spot by heroes hiding within that adjacent bush, especially when you're low on HP. However, you can use it to bait opponents or check for their presence. For example, if you're playing Franco, you can bait them into attacking you to reveal their position before hooking them towards your turret. This can often lead to a successful score. I think it would have been better clearing the enemy minions on the bottom lane. Not only will Nikki be able to earn the same amount of gold, Clint would have also gained less gold killing the jungle roach than taking down Harith. It's not a big deal though, it's still a decent trade off which further pushed Harith's progress in the game. Despite their messy lineup, I think Nikki's team can push through and win this. I mean, look at Clint. Instead of heading to the lane to clear the minions, he decided to waste his time on the crab. Now, there's nothing wrong in taking the crab, but as much as possible, prioritize clearing minion waves. Doing so not only helps put more pressure on the enemy lane, but also helps you get more gold and experience. Remember that lane heroes will always get more gold and experience from defeating a wave of minions versus jungle crypts. It's easier to clear minions and the rewards are just better. The ideal time to take the crab is when you have cleared enemy minions and are currently waiting for the next wave, not while they are already in your lane. A few minutes ago, Clint and Harith had almost the same level. 
but since Clint decided to take the crab instead of the lane minions, he ended up getting level gapped. Good bush utilization. Again, as much as needed, use the bushes to your advantage and don't just reveal your hero mindlessly. This can help you lessen the chances of getting ganked and can also help catch the enemies off guard. Be mindful of the minimap and check it as frequently as possible. Since Sneaky, Tyrael, and Saber ganked the two enemy heroes on the bottom lane, that confirmed to the enemies that none of them are near the top lane. The moment Harith, Tyrael, and Saber showed up on the minimap for their gank, Nana and Layla should have already fallen back to their turret or away from the lane. In the enemy's minds, three of their allies were far away, so taking both Nana and Layla down would be easy. Enemy has slain the turtle. Wait for it. Look into my eyes. Here it comes. Dare. Almost there. <laughs> no, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. Good job for Nikki waiting for the right opening to attack, which was right after Clint used his first skill. That gave Harith an opportunity to deal damage without receiving too much damage himself. After all, Clint's first skill is crazy powerful even in the early game. Nikki might not have been able to take the kill, but forcing Clint to retreat was already good enough to delay his level and item progress. Also, since Nikki was paying attention to his minimap, he was aware that the rest of the enemies were all clustered on the top lane. That's why he decided to keep attacking the lane. Again, map awareness will help you make better decisions, including when to attack and when not to. So try your best to check the minimap as frequently as possible. Since Clint already used Flicker a few moments ago, that means this time if Harith attacks, Clint will have limited escape options. Try not to stay in the same spot for a long period of time, especially if you are low on HP. That puts you at risk of getting taken down by another hero close by. Depending on your hero and items, you can either hide in the bushes, recall, or regenerate HP from nearby jungle crypts. Nikki did the right thing staying away from that clash. He was low on HP and Clint was not on the bottom lane. He basically knew even if they take one enemy hero down, there was also a high chance that both Saber and Harith will fall, which is obviously not a good trade-off. Instead, he went straight to the bottom lane to get more experience and gold. Since Clint went to the bottom lane turret, that gave Nikki a hint that Vexana was alone. Good job for taking advantage of that. Saber should have let Tyrael lead the way. If he did, he might have avoided getting taken down, which ultimately would have given them a chance to secure the turtle. As a result of Saber recklessly charging in, he got taken down and the opportunity to take the turtle was lost. If your jungler is taken down and you are outnumbered, it's best not to contest the turtle anymore because the risks are just too much. Instead, head to the lane and continue on gaining golden experience from the minions. Stop wasting time. Despite having many kills, their team had a hard time gaining lane advantage. This was mainly due to Nana being their XP laner. XP laners should ideally be heroes who can fend off for themselves with zero to minimal help from their allies. The idea behind that is for the roamer to have a smaller focus area. If the XP laner is capable of defending or pushing the XP lane alone, then that means the roamer can focus on helping the rest of their allies, especially when securing major objectives in the jungle. If the hero played on the XP lane is incapable of defending or pushing alone, then that puts more strain on the roamer and significantly breaks your team's map control. If you rewind the game, you would notice that a lot of times they were clashing on the XP lane. 
If Nick's team had a proper XP laner, one who is skilled enough and one who is playing a hero meant for the XP lane, the roamer and jungler would have been able to focus on the bottom lane and the jungle, which were significantly easier to push or dominate in that game because of how outmatched the respective enemy heroes were. But since their XP lane was significantly weaker than the opposing XP lane, and since Nana kept spamming the quick chat for help, their teammates focused more on that lane while losing the opportunities to dominate other areas of the map. Just to be clear, there's nothing wrong with clashing on the XP lane, but if the reason why you are bringing the clashes to that lane is to help your XP laner because they are getting outclassed 10 times out of 10, then that's a different story. Not only was Nana unfit for the XP lane role, the player was also focusing too much on clashes. Even when their turret is getting attacked or destroyed, the Nana players still stubbornly try to chase down teamfights, even those that were very far away from Nana. To make matters worse, Nana wasn't even contributing anything significant to the clashes. Either Nana dies or gets a stray assist from accidentally hitting the enemy heroes. Not sure why Saber uses ultimate and Uranus. That was an awful idea, a painful mistake. Such a waste of a good skill. Good thing Nikki was there to pick up the slack. Because I am sure. Not sure if Nikki noticed them late or underestimated them, but he should have just escaped through the river instead of fighting. Then, if he could, maybe lure or keep baiting them in order to give more time for Saber and have him destroy the inhibitor or even push for the win. As for Saber, I wish he would have switched to the mid lane instead of recalling back to base. The enemies were far, so there was no chance they could reach Saber within 3 seconds. Also, Tyrael and Layla were there on the closer to the mid lane to provide aid just in case. This small lapses in judgment on the surface may look harmless, but sometimes those small lapses in judgment are what separates a win from a loss. Good decision for not over committing to the kill. Besides the fact that Uranus was significantly harder to take down than other heroes, the Lord is also on its way to attack the top lane inhibitor. In case it's not yet obvious, kills mean nothing if your team can't control the lanes. I mean, look at their team kills. Nikki's team is certainly leading, right? But are they winning? Nikki did a great job of luring the Lord away from the inhibitor in order to prevent it from dealing tremendous damage to their structure. Sadly, Saber chose to regenerate mana at their base instead of helping out take down the Lord or defend the mid lane. Sure, Saber got the kill, but at what cost? A destroy turret. Before we forget, this was the build Nikki had in the game. His item build is mainly focused on dealing as much damage as possible, not just against fragile targets, but also high HP targets without sacrificing HP sustain. This build made his Harith significantly harder to take down, unless Harith was crowd control locked, of course. Let's be real though, almost any hero is weak against heavy crowd controls. He also bought Glowing Wand, which is not just excellent against high HP heroes thanks to its burning effect, it also has Life Bane, which allows it to reduce the HP regen and shield effects of its target. This was overall a good balanced offensive build. 
As for the emblems and talents he used, he focused on magic power which boosts not just Harith's damage but also shield production since the shields Harith gets from his skills scale based on total magic power. He also had War Cry, which in my opinion is one of the best core talents for heroes that specialize in dealing damage, especially those that use a combination of basic attacks and skills, since they are capable of activating this talent's effect easily. This is their chance to take the Lord. However, Saber was in the bottom lane. Instead of Nana, Saber should be the one joining in, while Nana defends against the enemy minions. After all, there were only two enemy heroes left alive, and those were Uranus and Vexana. Heroes who do not specialize in destroying structures, which shouldn't be a handful for Nana. As for Layla, instead of attacking Uranus, she should have focused her attacks on the Lord. 100%. I assure you, if they did it that way, they would have secured the Lord. My goodness, they choked so hard on that play. Remember, the longer the game gets, the faster the minions become. In addition to that, once the inhibitors, aka the base turrets, are destroyed, minions are going to be much, much stronger. Not to mention that they are defending against level 15 heroes, mostly item locked which will be nearly impossible. This is why ending games fast is the best way of playing ranked games. Finishing on the late game is almost always a huge gamble. So remember, regardless whether you are playing a late game hero or not, hoping to finish big on the late game is not the best idea. That's almost the same as preparing to lose. That concludes our Mobile Legends content for today. I hope a lot of us learned a valuable lesson when it comes to team comp, lane management, and map control. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, and in case you haven't yet, don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Stay safe everyone. Peace.